So we see there's an innate intelligence in the field of even our biological alchemical makeup. And we now understand that there's connections of our body functions to the energy points in the body and also seen as what we can call the chakras and what we've learned as Kundalini. And we see exchange and interaction of the field and the body through genetic patterns and signatures within protein copying and even with electromagnetic uh, signals sent throughout the nervous system in accordance into like heart and brain coherence as well. So it's like, is there more to be known when it comes to what this whole ascension process is rather than what we think the ascension may be and flying up in the air or, um, you know, uh, what's it called in the Bible? Um, rapture. Rapture and all that. Like, you know, it's just this whole physicality and this whole property of it. So it's like, you know, what is this space of ascension that we go into? That's mm. main question. Yeah, I, and, and to me, it could be very subjective to many. And I think at points of all of our journeys, uh, obviously, we're going to have moments where we all come together and understand a truth about that. But I think also in unique to our own journeys, I think ascension can mean a lot of things to a lot of people where maybe ascension at a particular point in your consciousness is just seeing past the physical, uh, like an ascension process could begin with I could see that there's a spiritual realm and that there's things beyond the physical. And that's an ascension process. You're ascending and transcending above that. The ascension process in itself though, of having this, is there more to learn or is this, or is there an understanding we all need? Well, I think it's really trying to understand it in your own way first, opposed to trying to hear someone else's interpretation of it, find what resonates. Uh, But to me, the ascension process really comes down to, you know, spiritually enlightening yourself and furthering the journey. And I think it's more of a journey than a say destination where I can give a straight answer of this is what Ascension is. You know, there mm-hmm. is ways to portray it. And in this, in the spiritual teachings, Ascension really is a thing and has a lot, but that's a process that only initiates, I guess, could really fully comprehend where you're becoming spiritually enlightened. Why do you think they have these, uh, uh, initiation processes. Why is there 30, 30, uh, 33 degrees in Freemasonry? It's a constant priming of the mind and consciousness to then understand what ascension actually is. If we all understood it from the, the ground up, from the beginning, I'm pretty sure, and people believed it and followed the, the, the directions and all of that, it could happen in a day. But the problem is, is it's something that has to be constantly primed in the mind and in consciousness. So it's, it's not an easy thing to define, but in this, in the matter of spiritual enlightenment and and ascension and all of that, there is the allegorical definition that means say to me, it means the most opposed to people probably thinking they're going to float up Mm -hmm. in the sky and all the physical things that people probably, you know, um, Imagine. And that's the thing besides the religious people, though, like there is like, how do you address the people when it comes to us knowing now, especially a lot of truth seekers, knowing the origins of certain sects and sects, sects. No, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> sects Sect. and, and societies right. of uh, maintaining the wisdom, maintaining the knowledge. And especially when we see the incorporation of say some of these societies and their illuminations, uh, throughout, you know, propaganda and stuff like that, you know, which is what gets us focused on and on, on labeling, whether it's good or whether it's bad and stuff, it's like, where does one go in order to figure out and learn the processes that occur for ascension, you know, that's the one thing that I think is a main constant conception when it comes down to it. And that's what, uh, that's where I like, in a way it's like that this consciousness that we have, the consciousness of the unity consciousness that's established within, within us all. Um, and that we feel separate from at times it's like this consciousness is going to need our consent in a way. You know, it's going to have to have us participate in it. Um, And it's like, 
a matter of the fact of how do you color in the consciousness? How do you color it in and shape it and mold it and make those transits for it to create this, you know, unification between the spirit and the soul and the mind, you know, do we look at them as separate those things or do we put them together? You know, and I think that's the bigger question sometimes that we need to have because it's more than just knowing what's being talked about and being able to allow the mind uh, to be able to resonate on more in an, an innate intuitive level. Well, and that comes, that's why I think I just said before, right? That everyone has a specific way to reach it. And why do you think there are so many religions or even secret societies that do what they do, where if anything, they're all trying to reach the same point, the same goal. It's all for ascension and, and transcending the physical and all of that. And when you really get deep in the understanding uh, the, the deeper symbolic meanings to religions or why secret societies do what they do, is they're, they're guarding the knowledge a lot of the times, and it's for this process. But let's say someone is more of a scientific mind. Well, what if I told you there was a scientific way to, uh, to describe the ascension process? What if I told you something happened in your body? So maybe someone needs to hear that first. So I think a starting point for each person is unique in its own, and you have to find out where people like, what do they need to hear first? And in the society we've grown up in, obviously everyone's obsessed with the material universe opposed to the spiritual. So what if, you know, uh, there was sects of, uh, you know, I guess teachings of this stuff where it started with the body and science first, you know, so maybe that's what it is. And where uh, the ascension obviously is one specific thing, but the journey to it can come from probably almost any area of study starting from material to the mental then to the to the spiritual it probably doesn't matter on where you start yeah i feel like that always goes back to the whole nikola tesla thing of if you can you know see everything in frequencies and vibrations then you'll understand the universe because when you're getting to see the comps uh, the concepts being discussed on a more deeper level of seeing the energies manifest into reality and then you're seeing the control that's necessary for our awareness that kind of helps process the the outcomes that are going on you know what i mean you see that there's a little bit more control coming on in a sort of way not to say that it's this hierarchy or this overbearing controlism that we think that we have in our lives or you know viewing ourselves at the as these monolithic type gods or anything but seeing how choice affects and how we actually have more choice than we think that's that's the thing that it's like we don't know how to sharpen our skills on in a way and yes some people do obviously and everything we incorporate them a lot of the times more than we actually know sometimes but that's the thing that I feel like is being missed in a lot of the discussions in the, you know, consciousness community. Uh, and are you, so are you saying that what needs to be discussed more is the open-mindedness that the fact that there are many beginnings to a journey like this, that there is mm -hmm. no right one uh, as yes. in, as an objective and more of a subjective approach mm -hmm. to it where we shouldn't judge anyone where they're at, because you don't know what, say, this, the topics of study that they're at, like where they're at in their life. I mean, here's a good way to put it. Shouldn't we trust the universe more that it knows best for each person what they need in that moment? And if there's certain people out there that are not meant to wake up instead of drop kicking these people, <laughs> it's like, why don't we allow them to kind of just be and speak your frequency and your truth and allow the universe to then deliver you the right people to you. And I think that is a lot of the problem. You know, we just talked about it before off air Gio of mm -hmm. having the ability to trust situations and allowing the universe to have your back in a way. And if you have that trust for that universe, uh, for your universe and, and, and the God that you, I guess, or the creator or the, whatever you believe in have something having your back in this ascension process and that where everyone is, is exactly where they need to be. And the only thing you could really do for others is be, it's the lead the horse to water and not force them to drink it if they don't want to. Right. So it's, I think there, I, I like to think there's levels of consciousness and Matt McKinley had said it great with the, with the grades. Uh, I would have probably described it a little different to his, um, 
but I think there are levels of consciousness that certain people just need a certain, a, mm-hmm. a certain trigger moment or, or, or way of defining this stuff to where it, to them, it's like, if you don't have someone that's really woo woo and they don't like spiritual talk, you need to just, dis- you need to talk with them on the physical and the mm-hmm. mental level, but whatever is going to trigger them continuing to ask questions. And I think that's the ascension process is the ability to trust the universe and then the ability to stay suspended and constantly ask questions and learn and never, ever, ever think you're there. Cause if you're still here in the body, you still have something to learn and you're, and you're not there. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I think it's the resistance to, uh, to, to, to learning about these doubts that come up, how to, incorporate them not just either shy them away or um you know adhere to these doubts that may come up but understanding why are you doubting it what is the thing that's going to shift the doubt into more of a faith into more of what we're what what we are trusting in this process and stuff it's like you're really needing to build up a template and a foundation uh even a a, a portal to be able to help you through your processes and you know you're having this this way or this reasoning to up you know to uphold and the more having the more intense energetic times and situations you know being able to shift them in a way that are going to be refining the knowledge that you interpret from them, seeing them in a certain way that you're actually not just succumbing to them. You're sitting there interpreting them, processing them, and being able to have the acceptance to deal with the time of it. Sometimes we just think that we can't be bothered with these things. And that's the thing where I think most is the hard thing to overcome is to be like, oh, or do you just overthink? But to me, that makes no sense. What are Mm -hmm. you doing here? (laughs) <laughs> well if you you don't have time to, to ponder life the, the the meat suit you're in and why you're here and all that have we forgotten that mm-hmm. you know like that's what i mean about i guess the obsession in this society and almost and and, i mean mostly this. america man let's be honest i mean you go to other countries i mean yeah of course a lot of them are primal and, and barbaric and all that but america really is i mean and maybe god i hope this pluto return comes in and just like it wipes America's ass with all the shit mm-hmm. that's in this fucking country. Because to be honest with you, it's annoying when people say they don't have a time, they don't have a time frame to, to put in for this stuff because it's like, yeah. well, has the other ways gotten you anywhere? Or are, are you happy from playing the rat race and being in the system and not focusing on yourself spiritually and that you're not asking these questions? Like, I feel like it's become almost offensive to people to go, you're actually thinking about life. This fucking guy. Yeah. Can't believe it. He's actually thinking. I can't believe it. And the thing is, is, I mean, even in the truth community, they're, they're very judgmental of this. If you're having a different way of approaching it, or if, you know, you know, like there's only a certain people, a few amount of people I could listen to and say, they're not really judging anybody They're They have very, very strong in and how they, they, whatever, but they're open-minded. And those are the only people I could listen to. I can't, I can't hear people say that it's, it's, it's an irk to me because what are you doing here then? Oh, it's, I got no time to think about that stuff. You don't have 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, shut your mind off, maybe ponder life a little bit. What are you afraid? You know, I think that's a lot to do with the fear. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, and that's a lot of the structure that we have been brought into, um, whether it's from parents and, uh, you know, religions and all the different sure, types sure. of way that we've been taught throughout the way. And that's the thing where it's like, okay, but how, don't get me wrong. Like I'm going to say it straight up, like as an Italian who still adheres to certain principles or at least wants to like, I'm like, okay, how do I shift my paradigm and how I think and how I live my life in a way that's not going to make me have to necessarily, uh, you know, sacrifice my ethnicity as well. I like my ethnicity and my sure. lineage. Yeah, I embrace yeah, yeah. it. Pride in your Absolutely. Sure. Exactly. But it's like, how am I going to do it in a way that's not going to have it, have it controlling me or leading me? And I think that's the main difference in knowing how to um, differentiate the energies as well of, of knowing and having the awareness within of being like, what is consuming me and what am I consuming is what I'm consuming, uh, consuming reiterate, like 
rebuilding up the energy that drives me or am I just constantly in this debt of energy all the time? You know what I mean? And it's like, I think we're constantly finding that struggle to be like, where can we find that energy to pull from that doesn't have to do with coffee or energy drinks or cocaine or fucking whatever it may be. Kratom. <laughs> yeah, Kratom. <laughs> Kratom is number one. But I know you're right. Yeah. But the thing is, I think it goes right back though to don't be afraid to ask questions then and begin learning, like to begin to unlearn and then start asking questions again. Because where are you going? Where are you going from here? And what I'm not saying, like, like, where are you going as in is, is really, that's it. You're going to focus on your bills, your kids, your family and all that. Not ask the, like I, what boggles my mind. Right. And I'm glad we're hitting on this is you're, isn't it amazing when you truly like become aware and pot did this to me, but like I start would come into the body and become aware of where I'm at. Right. And I'm sitting there going, Whoa, I need to learn more. Like, where's that, where's that wonder from everybody? Like, I, and I'm telling you, you're, and you, you said it best, the government and religion completely did shut off the wondrous part of people's minds. The imagination is so cut off. And there's moments I've come into my body and I become so aware of where I'm at and here sitting here going, whoa, I'm in this fucking thing. I'm looking at my hands. And at times I'm not even high. I don't have to be high. And I'm like that. I'm sitting there going, mm -hmm. Yeah. The fuck did I come from? So, and I mean, like a few years ago, would you think that you'd ever be able to accomplish that state alone? Just that alone, even as basic as it may be without getting high or something? Then no. I mean, I think I already mm -hmm. did it. Yeah. I don't know how other people feel out there about this, but this isn't a spiritual ego that I'm claiming. But when I was younger, I mean, a lot of the time, say in school and all of that, I never thought myself to be better than everybody or anybody at all. Right. But I always did say, I'm more, I, oh, I'm in, I'm more aware than a lot of these people. Like, and I'm going to, I'm going to claim that. Like, I'm looking at people going, they don't ask these questions. And if they do, it comes and goes. Maybe it's a joke and maybe they're, you're at a party or you do, you do get high with your friends or something comes up. And then it's like people either fear it or they give up on the whole talk of like, well, we're never going to know the answer. So what's the point? And it's like, no, nah, like my wondrous brain and mind was always like, I'm going to find it. And, you know, we want to know where, why we're depressed or why the society's so, you know, um, in the state it's in and with people and all that. And there's uh, uh, the, the, the suicide rates have gone up and drug addiction. There was an, the opioid crisis really popped off even more during the pandemic. And I'm sitting there going, do people realize that it might just be the fact that they lost their wonder? Could that be it? Right. Could it be the fact that they're afraid to ask those questions of, where did we come from? What's going on? And now you're in an age where there's so much information and you have access to every culture and every story of that culture. And you could go look around and you could go on fucking, you know, 3D um, tour things of the pyramids and you could go just, you mm -hmm. could investigate so much now. And at this point when all the information is now available to us, people are there, that question's like outdated. It's like, well, where did we come from? You, we really, really, bro. Like we're never going to fucking know, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's the most ironic thing in the world to me to think that people have lost not only their wonder, but the open mindedness to say, hey, no, I think we can. You know, like, what if the answers to a lot of our problems are in this information, which they mm. are? I can tell you. I, right. Yeah. I think that the, the realism of current circumstances in life and reality, I think that's something that people just kind of get locked into. We all can, we all can sit there sure. and think in the standards and the status quo of what is going on right now, how I need to adhere to life. Um, what's going to keep me, uh, you know, uh, able to keep going and living and surviving and, uh, you know, being able to be functioning in society and stuff. But I think along that process, that's where we kind of take this step back from our truths and our true selves um, and and being able to know how to come into our own space, make our own vision, hop on this timeline of which is coming from our true soul desires, not just the material desire, but the true soul desire and understand how to work with that energy, understanding how to work with the energies that we're currently involved with shifting into and out of some things. And I think that's part of the process of ascension. 
Well, and I think on, and it's funny because I, I agree with you on every level there. And where I think people need to begin is understanding there is an energy, right? There Mm -hmm. is a process. I could tell you that something happens in the body that actually activates something in the mind, right? And then you can parallel it back to allegorical stories in the Bible and ancient scriptures. And it's amazing to think that there's people from thousands of years ago that coded this crazy knowledge of things that go on in your body and in the sky into the stories through characters and events and happenings and stuff like that. But it's like, maybe, and I'm saying, man, like people need to know that that energy you're speaking of that Tesla had said is an actual thing. And that there's actually mechanisms that there are real things we could say, Hey, look over here. You guys are missing. Like all this information came out about the Kundalini and how there really is this energy of the Pingala and the Ida, and it goes up and it hits the brain. And there's this thing that goes on that some Mm -hmm. other people called ascension and enlightenment. Yeah, You know, it's a real thing. Yeah. And that's the thing that I feel like is that people go constantly to look for it in a book. And, and this is not to say not to do those things, but they go look into that. But the thing is, they don't know how to take it in and everything. You know, it's the putting faces and symbols, uh, symbols to states of vibration, so that you can interact with another force of nature. So it's like, when you sit there and have this information hit the receptors in your brain? Like, are you actually fully embodying it? Are you fully under, understanding it um, and and allowing to differentiate from just what your no, normal structure of how to uh, observe things are? Like, are you taking the observant nature from the supernatural standpoint? And maybe that's also part of the problem is the the lack of confidence in supernatural Uh, occurrences. I mean, and that's the easiest thing to, I think, really accept is because of the fact that a lot of what we see in the world, whether it's the, we've said it before, the whole Wi-Fi thing showing up, person on your screen or your phone that's 3,000 miles away, like simple, that's a version of supernatural. Yeah, we forget that. I'm dude. I will never. You want to hear something funny? The not to cut you off, but association. Mm-hmm. I remember the part of Assassin's Creed Origins or uh, Odyssey. I was playing when we were listening back to our talk. Remember when we first started? You know, we recorded that one and we were talking. I remember doing the exact. Man, I'm sitting there going, "Wow, that's how like profound that realization was." Where I can remember the exact moment where we were in my room, we were talking about it and listening back over to our recording. And I'm sitting there going, "Yeah, like how do people forget that?" That we're like screen to screen right now and you're fucking thousand miles away, thousands. And like, like, how can't you think that there are, aren't other metaphysical and crazy esoteric things that goes on and all of this information just happens to be coded because they didn't want dumb idiots. And I'm saying dumb idiot, like people who don't think to have the information. So it's like, hey, look, we're going to make it we're going to make it work for it. We're going to put a mountain here and it's going to mean higher mind and the father and, and then daughter actually means emotions in the story and all that. And it's all this coded stuff to actually explain something so simple. Exactly. It's showing, it's showing this internal conflict that goes on within us. And sure, you can go into states of wanting to understand why that conflict is there. Uh, But you can also with that, when you really think about it, you can understand it in the fact of cause and effect and duality, and how that comes in, Um, rather than looking at it as bad and good. I rather I would rather say duality rather than bad and good. um, Because then it just kind of gives it this it's together. It's still together rather than one is opposed from the Supreme. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. but it still is in that sense, but uh, therefore you're not giving it that importance, you know? And that, that's, I think that's why we go through certain things in our life. That's why we hit those areas, no matter what path we're on, we could be on, you know, this high spiritual religious path or, uh, you know, giving to the poor or whatever it may be. But I think the reason why we hit some of those lows is because knowing the bottom and the darkness or the shadows and being able to distinguish what's above when you see the bottom in its divine placement uh, with all of creation in existence, there's an understanding how it's also a realm. It's a realm and its purpose in order to ascend the more harmonious realms past the physical realm. You're being able to sit there and see that it's like, this is not my 
standstill point. Hmm. I've been at this point. There's a comparison level and you begin to have that humility to be like, okay, I've been here. I've been here. And now right now I'm here, but this low point that I'm at is not going to be the determining factor because I know that I've been at point A before I got to point B. So therefore you understand the workings that it takes to get yourself back to point A. And you've also had times to be above it as well. So it's, it's the constant calibration all the time. It's humility and the exaltation of what's constantly called this Christ consciousness. It's the death of the ego and understanding the ego's role, knowing what worked when you were going up, but understanding how to maintain the exaltation partial through the humble and grateful appreciations that you have of all the happenings. So, yeah, it's a, it's a battle. Oh, and before I, I carry on on that is so to you, then I ask you, then ascension to you means what, you know, and if people had to hear it, like if you had people that have really have only known or even religious, I mean, hell, you come from a background of, of Christianity and all of that, that if you had to explain, say, ascension to a Christian, you know, I mean, would you then describe it as our Lord Jesus Christ and what he had went through or, you know, nowadays, knowing what you know, how do you approach these things to people that are very, very much um, mm. you know, uh, I guess indoctrinated. I hate to use the word, but that's no, that's what I'm going to use. Yeah. How can you make them also see the validity of even what they may believe? You know what okay, I mean? Right. You don't necessarily yeah. have to tell them that their beliefs are shit or something like that, or they're wrong. It's just getting to see their beliefs in a deeper allegorical sense. And I think that's what we've been kind of stressing all along because We've seen a lot of parallels when it comes to biblical scripture. We've seen a lot when it comes to symbolism um, and all the different types of maybe even mythologies and the the culmination of even reflecting on what happens in the cosmos, how they still happen internally. The same thing with nature, like this fractal patterning that goes on. So, I mean, I think that's a very... I don't know. It's a very obvious reference to have. Yeah. I, you know, it's important for me though, to really understand uh, how the, I guess when you're talking to certain people is, is the indoctrination so much that they are legit cut off. And if they are, where are, where can you be? That's why I revert back to my scientific stuff, you know, or can you give them a whole nother route without, what, what, what did I just listen to though? Oh, believe it or not, it was a uh, astrology hub listening to Richard Tarnas on astrology hub. And he was talking about how he, be, and this is going to relate back to the religious is uh, he was talking about how he, you know, he was doing all this astrology work. He just got into it and he was so good at he, the first book he wrote. Wasn't really more astrological, but it was a prime for cosmos and psyche. And so when he, he wrote two books, he had so much information. The first book he released became in this academic, like, everyone loved it in the academia world and all that. And they said, Hey, like we love your work on history and all this documentation, be a professor. And he became a professor. And then he released cosmos and psyche. I, I think the book came out before, but regardless, he was more known as the professor still being an astrologer. And then when he showed his academia, the, the astrology compared to his other work, he called it a Trojan horse. He hmm. said, if people, the people gained I, I've earned these merits from people because I was good at something else. And I made like, say something like astrology and not, I'm even saying with the religious understanding that we have is giving people enough to, to like open the door for them and give you credibility and say, Hey, this person's smart. They're unbiased. They, they, they do great work. And then you hit them with the whole, Hey, did you ever actually hear it this way though? Like now that you trust me, and I've used this prior knowledge as a Trojan horse to get inside inside your mind and within the sect of whatever it is you're trying to explain to certain people. It's like, hey, can, can we just be open-minded for a second and just really hear me out? I have something really interesting to show you. So because it's important for me, because I feel like once a lot of the religious stuff is broken open, I, I, I don't want people to step away from religion. I want people mm -hmm. to step away from organized religion. And I'm saying yeah. the heavy organized. I mean, if you have a congregation of a few hundred people and you're this local church, fine, that's fine. But when it comes to the bigger, bigger and bigger, to me, that's a lot of the issue when they're not getting taxed, when there's a lot of pedophilia 
when there's when a guy's wearing a fish hat and no one notices, uh, it's like we really have to start hitting that because it is a bit of a poison and a cancer. And I'm not saying the religious, the religion itself, but the way it's portrayed. And that would be a lot of what my mission statement is when it comes to say the religious area of, uh, of what I, what we present and what I'm trying to present, because that's, that is a cancer as much as government is a cancer right now. It doesn't mean that the idea of it or the thing itself is bad, but the way that it is, in, interpreted and in the way that it is basically integrated into our society is very much a cancer and it gives a lot of open doors for people to be bad people but but it, and, and i'll really i'll staple it with this there's no reason though to force people to to think something but a mm-hmm. matter of can you get people to listen that's it yeah that's yeah, that is that's a mean important thing and a lot of times you could see when they're there even just maybe what you're listening to is there a reciprocation back you know that's you know or you just kind of keep going on and uh, mock, uh, mimicking this rhetoric or whatever in just faith that this is the tangible thing that's going to go on or or are you actually seeing the tangibility within are you seeing the things that you are able to work with, even when observing your own awareness? You know, are you able to settle yourself in that way of being able to observe your own awareness? Are you able to then understand that that awareness is part of the grand consciousness that encompasses all of us? You know, that's not separate. You know, and that's, do you know what he do you, and you know what do you know what that even means too? So that's why it's mm-hmm. like there's even like I think more kindergarten levels to what you just said too. The word consciousness could probably confuse a light. They probably yeah. just mean the con, like, con, oh, conscious, like I'm here, I'm conscious, like no consciousness, like the, the awareness of the cosmos and what you are, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, like I said about the, the uh, whole uh, humility thing. It's like we have to be able to come into understanding and grasp that our, um, our perception at times is not going to be completely right, but it's also not false. You know, it's not something that's false. Your perception is part of that unity consciousness that branches off, that's making all individual unique types of way of creating this very unique structure uh, of reality as well. Um, It's just which part do you wish to play in that? And, you know, that goes back to the whole law of attraction manifestation thing as well. But like we've talked about many times, it's that there's a loss on the path that we think that if we just think it, feel it and believe it, then that's it. But we also don't know how, how to have this occurrence within us of a type of stillness and not just not just through meditation or yoga, which yoga is the union, like it's it's also being able to adherently practice it constantly throughout all your interactions without life as well you know and you're keep you keep practicing it to the point where it becomes more fluent you know it's the same thing of, as like almost like learning a language but that's what we've constantly been saying is learning this language of the universe coming to understand the the language of the universe rather than just the uh, the the rhetoric of history, of laws, of government, of what our parents teach us or what our, you know what I'm saying? Like you're actually coming into this thing of making a rationality with it and learning how to observe the logic, not rather than observe the dream, observe the intuition with the logic. You're also learning how to observe the logic and the rationality with this higher conception of of uh, divine uh, unity conscious type energy. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm always going to now revert back to because it, it's really hit me hard to know that I think with a lot of this stuff, it's a matter of that Trojan horse thing is going to end up really sticking with me because. It's like, how can we explain things so simply to people to then just like, it's like, we should have the goal to just open doors for people, not kick and scream and say, look at the numbers or 
look at the conspiracy. It's Mm -hmm. give them the reason and give the awareness and the consciousness that this stuff actually is a thing and that it is real. And then if that people think it is too woo woo, I, you know, going back to organized religion, I think they did a number on people giving all these false promises and all this corruption that's built within and that people that are unconsciously kind of like losing trust in if anything, they don't trust the people and the organizations within that that sector, that faith or that religion, yet they're actually probably associating it with the knowledge, which was probably a psyop in its own, right? Like if, look, if we, if we um, infiltrate the, these important teachings and we take them and kind of turn them in our own way, use them for control. And look, if people get mad at us, whatever, look, they're still going to, they're going to hate the knowledge anyway. And we have it. So mm-hmm. might as well just do it. And it's going to get people to look away regardless. Like, Oh God, this isn't a thing. And uh, you know, they're, they're pedophiles and, you know, I say prayers all the time and God doesn't answer them. It's like, yeah, but when you start really getting the, when you start going beyond it and you do go down the path of initiating yourself into understanding a lot of this stuff, it opens the door of consciousness. Then it does open the door of, I see things differently and all of that. And if you need to start with science, I mean, here, look, I say probably three things that can immediately get you thinking. One would be the hundredth monkey effect. Another one would be um, the uh, quantum entanglement. And the other one would be, um, what's the other, and then double slit. And that's where kind of I started with, I started realizing like, wow, the the matrix or like the nature of this place, there's, there's still not a lot of explanations. The fact that we're screen to screen a thousand miles away is like, Whoa, how is this my picture? To, and it's, I know it's simple, guys. I got, I sound like Matt. God, I know that you're, you know, you just lifted yourself up out of the tub and you know, you're ready to launch the ducky and all. But the thing is, is really it's that simple. When you, when you call someone on the phone or you're doing something like that, these things that we're, these things that we're all used to, it's insane to not be like flabbergasted by this stuff and to think, holy shit, like there's way more. And, but they just rather lay down and take the churches and, and the mainstream science's word for it. And I'm, I don't call myself a conspiracy theorist, but I can tell you this, I'm a thinker. And I think that's what people need to be like. It's like the truth seeking. I get, I, even that's becoming a little like shadowed with a crap energy and, uh, you know, conspiracy theorists, but how about you just be a thinker, you know, a, 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 a conscious thinker and really ask questions. And I mean, from my experience and Gio, I'll let you carry on from here. Like my experience with this stuff is as nothing has done nothing, but improve my life. Nothing else. Yeah, I absolutely. A hundred percent agree. I literally just told you before I was having that conversation, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like people get so close, you know what I mean? Like we always get so close by looking at maybe some of these connective types type occurrences that some people may call coincidence, but instead we'll say it's synchronicity and it makes sense and it's aligned with it. But what do we do with that information? A lot of people take it and and all of a sudden direct it in this um, creating the enemy. You know, we've said it before, you create that enemy, you know, then it's going to be there. So it's like, Instead, understanding how to see the matrix, this Maya, this illusion into how it's manifesting and then seeing the part that you can play with wanting to pull out of it, you know, and it's not to pull out and be aimless about it as well. It's really being able to pull out and understand how to reconstruct it. Once again, like I said, refine it. You know what I mean? You go back into those low points. And then it's knowing the descent isn't permission to just damn ourselves. And that's no matter the repetitiveness of this insanity. It's knowing you're more in control of your happiness than you think just by balancing the perspective of it, the perception of it. You know, you start to begin to be able to recognize patterns and being able to also avoid patterns. But no matter what, they end up catching. And instead of avoiding, you begin to articulate these patterns and seeing where this, the, the where they stem from and learn to change the stemmings into more gradual process of seeing the steps ahead, you know, and then you see those steps ahead, depending on your choices that you start making and you start seeing that you do have a choice. You know, it's literally almost like 
looking into the future. This is where the intuitive process of our mind is starting to be built up and you're shifting perspectives and the paradigms and aligning into the vision of what's already existing possibility out in the ether. And you just embody that, embody that moment and learn more as you're in it. It's not going to just be one shot, one deal. Well, and it's, it's under, like, like I said at the beginning, right. It's like, and agreed. I, I just think under don't, like starting the journey in the way you need to, like I needed to hear and see certain things and the law of attraction was my, I guess my big one. And, but like, I also started with nine 11, to be honest, that made me think of like, Ooh, I love the mysteries. I love figuring things out, but that's my own thing. Right. It's like, someone might just want to help their family. And they're like, Oh, I think, you know, taking the path of enlightenment or, or becoming a more spiritually aware person might help me feed my family. So other people can start for other reasons, but it's a matter of like, okay, so reverting back to your own life. And I'm talking to the listener and Gio, you could take it too, is have you asked yourself, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again, is have you asked yourself the question of what am I doing here? Why? And am I really in, like, am I really living in love and compassion and for myself in the world? And if not ask yourself the questions of what can I do? And what am I, what do I think my purpose is? And if you can't answer that, you have work to do. That's all. And that's where it's like, at that point, if you couldn't give me a straight answer, and by the way, and this would be how I interrogated myself in the past. Wow. Ray, I can't give myself a straight, like my twin talking to, you know, the the Gemini twin, the ones going, what the fuck are you doing here, dude? It's all bro. Like, what are you even doing? What do you mean? You know, like, um, (laughs) but like, it's like, well, I can't answer that. We'll get on the fucking ball, bro. Like, it's time to do it. You know, it's time to go. And the thing is, is now I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking back, like, wow, if I didn't ask these questions to myself and fully care about my life and what really pushed me and I brought up family is because I thought about them too. And I go, man, if I better my life and become more aware of myself, I actually better the lives of people around me. And I think that's a key quality people have forgotten is Mm -hmm. actually the general, the, 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 it's so simple to think is like, Hey, you're here. You should care about the people that you're around. And, and you share this place with other people. You should like j- legit care about these people. Mm-hmm. So what can you find to push yourself over the, like, okay, I need to get the fuck out of my selfish ways. I need to better my life. And this information did it for me. And it started though with, I want to help the world by figuring out the bad guy. And that actually evolves into this whole thing of like, Oh, wait a minute. The bad guys actually might be a reflection of like, all of a sudden I, I'm understanding consciousness. And I'm going, did we make the government on an unconscious level as the, as the whole, like, I mean, as all of us as human or these five fingered beings of generating reality by observation, did we create the government because it's only showing us a mere reflection of us as a collective that like all of us are giving ourselves the limitations because we can't take care of ourselves and that we think we need a parental figure Mm -hmm. and maybe we're the ones manifesting, say the government and all that. So you start at trying to figure out the bad guy. And then all of a sudden you gain this awareness and say, Holy shit, I think it's us. And that's what this stuff will do to you. You'll start thinking more about it. And you just start peeling the layers back. You're like, Holy shit. I wanted to blame everybody else, but fuck it was me. You know? Yeah, I I think absolutely that's the case that it does show us. It does show us the the hidden sides of ourselves. And that's where we get to make that choice. It's like, are we going to see it and then just avoid it or completely just think it's it's right and we go about it and we just do it. And then when we fall, we're in this low place in this low vibration that all of a sudden we're going to be like, Oh, it's because of this. It's because of that. And don't take the acceptance or the responsibility that that was also our choice. You know what I mean? We know like when we were, when we're good and we, we accomplish something, we're like, yeah, because I chose to do this and I did this or whatever. And we take acceptance for that, but how come we can't take acceptance for the, you know, I'm not saying not, not everybody, obviously, but a lot of times we don't want to initially take the, the, the responsibility of making a choice uh, of something that creates some sort of discomfort in our life. And then right away, it's some right away. It's some sort of detriment to us. And that's not necessarily true, but why is that not true? It's because of our perception of it, because we right away start to believe that, um, that, that, this thing that we did is 
this type of overall negativity, whether it's an external influence that caused it or had part in it, um, or because of a conditioning that we have as well. But in that observation, we use that as an excuse rather than sitting there and turning it around of being like, oh, I understand it. So therefore, it's not something that I have to beat myself down for, give guilt about, be shameful about. It's in my human nature. It's in all of human nature. It's that duality. This is why understanding the energy in this this sense and understanding and going further into the uh, the the ancient texts and the knowledge and the truth seeking type of information. This is why. This is why we do it. And I also think that's a big part of of why it's so important even to look back at the historical events. Sure, a lot of historical things may be written from the from the victor's perspective. But can you embody yourself and jump that timeline of seeing who maybe the the antagonist or protagonist uh, was at that time? Can you jump into that that frequency? And you can when you understand in vibration and frequency and understanding. And that's where we also get the whole astrological aspect of it, because that's a configuration in a cosmic way that's creating angular ways of light. No matter whether you think that planets or the earth is a disc or their spheres, no matter what, there's angles happening angles and their angels and they're deliver they're delivering photons and photographic memories and information that's going to be in a symbolic way that our minds intercept our minds are the processors of these symbols of these images and frequencies of light yep. and you can learn to widen your broadband of being able to see beyond certain frequencies of just the light spectrum I think that's the thing that it's like, this is the hidden knowledge that the Knights Templar and all these secret societies, the Rosicrucian, Illuminati and stuff. And we get fixated on these groups and understanding their relevance that still play part today. But them playing part today, you have to take the, um, you have to take the knowledge of that. There's a lot of, uh, disruption of and the perversion of mankind that comes along to play with it, especially in a high functioning society of of constant stimulation and gratification and consumerism. Yeah, and I know now you have the radar, Geo. It's like even in everyday life, especially you being out there in the workforce, and I'm more of the hermit, cynical, not even cynical. I shouldn't say that. I love people, but like I just I don't like how people act, but you're out there with in the restaurant and you're dealing with a lot and you're a little more active on that end than me is, I mean, when don't you start observing it and, and, and it's like, you can almost smell it on people like that. They're so lost or that they're so not there. <laughs> it, it, doesn't it become, I guess when you, when you wake up and I'm talking about the real waking up and all that really means is developing a self-awareness, not becoming a woke fucking jerk off, but like you literally just yeah, start, not woke politics or anything. Right. Like yeah. That no, way. like, no, and there and there is like when I say awake, I'm not even saying the way that someone awake is good for like is like someone else awake, but as long as I'll simplify it, as long as you're you have a self-awareness to observe everything and you're talking to yourself throughout the day and giving this unbiased and like almost like you have this observation of people. Can't you smell it now, Gio? Like you could see it in people mm -hmm. and like it's like a scent. And what I mean by it's, that is a spiritual it's more scent. secondhand. It's yes. Spirit, you yeah. develop other senses besides the physical sense. Yeah. And I think that's what's being taught to us when it comes to even this, you know, being able to trans uh transmutate our chi. That's what's been talked about all along. You know, opening the third eye, the kingdom of heaven within you. Um kundalini that's all part of being able to have this resurrection of the innate intelligence that we lost whether you want to go into the perception of we lost it in the symbolic garden of eden or through choice and through human conscious development and going through this split the constant split even on a cellular level that there's constantly this 
thing to overcome almost when it comes to all throughout evolution of life in that way. It's like, no matter what the split may be, we always have to come back to that singular point. And that singular point is more tangible and ready to be observed and fall in line with than we realize but it's because our own ego gets in the way of having this individual standpoint, you know, and it's okay. That's absolutely, you're unique. You're a unique fragment of, of consciousness, the overall consciousness, but can you take that uniqueness and play it into one that's going to be of, of something that's more resonating with your truth, your soul truth, not the physical material world truth. You know, and I think that's the thing we forget a lot of the times. Yeah, we lose our wonder. It's as simple mm-hmm. as that. And yeah. uh, if you're someone out there that's it's saying, uh, you know, what would be the point? Or I don't have time and all that. No, you always have time and just think about your deathbed. And are you going to be laying there sitting there? Man, I wish while I was in this body and in this mind, and I had the ability to go seek out this place and the wonder of it and use my imagination. And, you know, are you going to regret the decisions you make? And and when you have enough information, now it's like you have no excuse when you're in the age of information, you can connect to anyone across the world. It's like you can make your life better by choice. And it's going to start with facing the shit you don't want to. But it's like, why can't people just understand like beyond the shit you don't want to do is the life you want. And that goes with anything. It goes with your career, your relationships, all of that. Why are we so hesitant? Same thing with religion. If I were to tell you that Jesus might not have been historical, don't get upset. Don't cry about it. I'm saying if he happened to be an allegorical story about the body and mind, and it was the secret to your ascension, that what he was trying to teach you in that book was the ascension process of finding the kingdom within and, and, you know, him being crucified on the cross, being between the two thieves is actually only your crucifixion between the two thieves of the eyes. And, you know, you activating the pineal and, and pituitary gland and by doing that, it's the marriage that the masonries talk about, like the Freemasons talk about this marriage of the energies of masculine, feminine. It's like all of this stuff could be coded with an absolute truth. And I got, I don't want to be on my deathbed going, man, I, you know, I, I, who wouldn't want to know the truth, you know, or at least start journeying it. I think, I, I think honestly, we have, to, you got to do it in maybe way more than one lifetime. Uh, you could do this in one lifetime, but I believe in reincarnation. I believe this place is a school, is karma and dharma. And I think you have the opportunity, if you were aware right now, to then transcend and ascend something to where you don't have to come back at a worse time that you're going to develop. And that's my belief, but you know, it's something that I lean on right now. I'm not saying to believe it, but I lean on it. But through my studies, through the adventures uh, that I've taken in the mind, I'm having fun now. Whoa, I get to entertain this idea. I'll be like the guy from Leap Project. Whoa, it's like, you know, I was like, whoa. whoa. And I'm just like going to my mind. And all of a sudden I'm seeing the archons and the reptilians. I'm going, whoa. But, uh, you know, I, it's just, it's like, how, why wouldn't you want to have fun with this too? It's like, you really just want to be a stiff, go sit in a pew and then just find out your bishop bangs some kid the next weekend. Like, is that really what you want? Hmm. That's, and that's, once again, it comes back down to the choice of it. Right. You know, this is, this is what we're saying that we see that's coming from the even the signs and how are we determining the signs? Well, when we go back to ancient scriptures and uh, biblical prophecies and all that, it's always this reference to the cosmology um, and it's teaching, it's showing us the shifting of the enlightenment into the new age it's constantly being shown throughout writings you know we're we're having this initiation into um into the games of what's going on you know if you want to look at it from that standpoint you know and like you said you mentioned incarnation before and stuff and reincarnation it's like every incarnation like i said when it comes to the splitting of things you're fighting to get into the world constantly your soul on a soul standpoint away from the being of being a physical meat suit and you're a whatever job or whatever thing you the may consciousness be in the exactly body. you're thinking of the actual awareness of your consciousness you're fighting to get into the world by making it through um and who knows the steps before this as well too but through the essence and vibration into the seed 
into the sperm and then being able to make that energy and that outward movement of when you're going to be initiated to make your way in towards into the into the egg and then going into the egg and becoming the womb and then on top of that not only that it doesn't stop you're fighting being premature being fighting from being a preemie and being, you know, uh, uh, maybe even if you're a twin, the resources through the umbilical cord as well and fighting into the world as well and so on throughout life. And you're gaining all this time, the maturity and the wisdom, but not just in the material sense of the wisdom. You know, this is where we have to start differentiating the wisdom. Um, you know, this is where we start being able to observe our soul consciousness that's coming into awareness and being able to clear the mind and feeling into the space. You know, that's the thing. We constantly feel like we're, we're consumed into this one space, but there's spaces beyond it. That's all of this teachings as well that are going on. And these are the things that we can see throughout the Bible, throughout the ancient, uh, you know, uh, uh, writings and carvings and everything and stuff. Um, it's more than just associating with the external world, you know? So the wisdom is lying dormant within us and it needs unlocking. How do we unlock it though? That's the main question. Yeah. And if you're out there wondering, like, how do I even be, like develop the interest? I've been trying to say it basically this whole time, find something that sparks your interest about it. And, you know, and if your religion, by the way, is blocking that, I think you have something to then re to reconsider about that religion. If something's telling you not to study, not to meditate, not to look within and just, Hey, look, just follow our lead. You'll get all your rewards in the afterlife. Just keep giving us money. And it's just, there's no reason to think if, if something's not telling you to think or to do something for yourself, I do believe there's a reconsideration that needs to happen in all of that. And I'm mm -hmm. talking about the government. I'm talking about your parents. I'm talking about your spouse. I'm talking about your friends. I'm talking about religion. I'm talking about your teachers. Anybody who says, don't do this in a way where you think it's going to better your life. If someone tells you not to go sell drugs and bang prostitutes, smoke and crack fucking hooker behind a dumpster, you probably shouldn't do that because there's common sense. So take, don't take it too literal. I'm saying hmm. that if there is a study you want to, if you want to, if you are religious, say, and you feel like meditation is important or that, you know, you heard it from someone and there's this, the door cracks open, but then your, your, your bishop or your priest is like, that's the devil. I don't need you walk through that door. You have to come back next weekend for confession. All right. Now I don't want you talking that devil worship, that meditation and those chakra systems. When yet in the chakra systems is actually the seven seals on the backside in the Bible. So like you don't know what they're condemning. And if you don't, it's like, here's my point. If you don't know other cultures, if you don't understand other religions, if you don't, whatever, and, and whatever you're doing seems to be a limitation, like you've hit a point, your life is stagnant, it's stale, you're not getting anywhere, you feel spiritually dead, it's time to reconsider, a time for a rebirth. That born-again Christian nonsense is not dumping your head in some water and admit, it, maybe it is, I mean, it's a ritual, I get that, but the thing is, is when you look spiritually, what born-again means, it means you have a spiritual death and then you are rebirthed as a reborn, as, as a new consciousness, right? So that means that all the preconceived ideas and everything you were fed of as a, as, a, as a kid up till now is gone. It's wiped. You're an open, you're a clean slate. And that's what this stuff will do to you. So if you feel spiritually dead, maybe it's not your kids and the money and the bills and the job and all of that. Maybe it's your beliefs. Maybe it's what you, you, what you've invested in and certain people are going to be afraid to step out of that. You know, some Democrats want to keep wor worshiping Joe Biden just because they pick blue and, and whatever, and they're stubborn. And, and then certain people with Trump is, you know, they think he's the answer. Some people pick Christianity and then they all of a sudden they're eating meat on Fridays and they don't follow any of the shit that was, that they tell them. So it's like, what are you doing? Like, can you ask yourself these questions? And if, if you can't, you have a problem, you need to do something about that or, You'll be that deathbed person. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, then it's like, how do you know that shit's working for you? Right. Why? Because maybe you can pinpoint out a few times or something that something went in your favor. That's not necessarily the answer. You I can prayed see for $10 for cigarettes <laughs> and I found $10, uh, you know, on the, on the ground. I think God was answering my prayer.
Some guy got hit by the car. Cigarette pack flew out of his pocket. I got cigarettes. So I got yeah. You know, <laughs> God, thank you so much. You know, God bless America. Oh, you just bombed. Uh, you are we just bombed Iran and killed seven kids and three moms. God bless America. Yeah. Uh, that's what I mean. It's it's this ridiculousness into this egoic point, especially because it's very hard for us when you just like with, with, with what you just said, it's very hard for us to step into the into the shoes of being outside of the very thing like our country that what we are involved with our principles and everything principles and observations are different elsewhere as well. So this is where it comes back to this being able to suspend those things, suspend those beliefs and going into the wisdom and needing and needing it to be practice. You know, what you're doing is you're refining and you're sharpening your sword. You become a blacksmith. You know, you become a smith, like a John Smith, right? A John Smith was a worker. You know, he was, it was the person who initiated of the settlements and, you know, you know what I mean? Like that's where that yeah, lineage yeah, right, of right. that name comes yeah. from. So yeah. it's different from knowledge. You know, it's having spiritual stamina, you know? Yes, of course, there's ways to build up and fortify things in, in a physical sense too, but too much of the external makes consciousness into a creature of noticing the breaking and then believing that you can then be broken. And that's something that we have the ability to control. We don't have to believe that where it can be broken. What does broken mean? Just Your definition of broken yeah, is yeah. the fact of whatever you put to it. And well, and then just stay away from like, when I say like, I mean, really, really. And I know, you, I think you're, 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 you think the same now. It's like, when I say believe, I believe this. It just means right now, temporarily, I'm considering this to be the truth, but I'm open to anything else changing that, right? So that's why I think we get the word speculate. But the thing is, is if the, those beliefs you're, you're talking, anything like that is like, as soon as you put a cube around all your thought processes, they're, they're, that's that's the trap. It's just a trap. It is. It's like, you have all this time now here. And look, I think this is a game that is infinite, right? Like, this is also my opinion that this game's infinite. So don't think that if you're doing something wrong or you hear this, you're like, I don't, you know, like if you don't have the time, look, in my eyes, it was just different from religions is when you die, you come back, you know, you just got to do it all over again. And if you didn't take care of certain things, you got to do it all over again. Opposed to the whole, like, I'm like, look what Christianity does to certain people or Catholicism. It's like, they condemn you to a place where you're going to be in a fucking frying pan, getting a porch or a, fitch, or a pitchfork up your ass, you know? And if not, then you're going to be Jesus's neighbor up there. And you're going to, what, you're going to live next door to him, white picket fence. You get bored in a fucking month, you know? I, I'm, and I'm being very sarcastic here, but the thing is, is why can't you consider these things? Like, does that really make sense to you? Does that really make sense? And, and, and if it does, I, I'm fine. That's like, I, I'm not going to argue if that's your common sense. I'm just saying there's no wrong answer to, I think what I was trying to just say here, that there's no, there's no right or wrong. Like we could also kind of back off of like, oh my God, we, we got to really spiritually get this shit right. Like, uh, like if I'm going to go to hell or I'm going to go to heaven or if I'm going to spiritually be enlightened or not. I just think there's nothing to worry about. And I think everyone should also drop the seriousness of it, which is the importance factor of comedy and being the Joker as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you can do that. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's an archetype alone that has been a resonating type of thing for me as well. Um, and I think is something that resonates with a lot of people. But this is why when we learn about things, you know, it's like I said earlier, it's not about just reading. You could read all the ancient texts, all the scriptures and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you are not fundamentally breaking that, breaking them down within your own intuitive, innate intelligence that's connected to this oneness as well, then you are not building um, a foundation, a template for yourself. You know, you are just doing something in hopes that you're just, am I like, look at it. Am I doing it right? Dad, am I doing it right? It's like, no, that's, that's not it. It's the worshiping or 
the working as when you really translate the original languages back down to what worship is. It's the working or the building of the light where the internal light or the chakras are then worked. These awareness points within your body that help you align these sectors of this inner crossing of the uh, uh, of up the up the spine and through the cerebral the cerebral fluid, right? You have the cerebral spinal fluid, right? And when you connect it to the cosmos and the astrological sense as well, you can think of it as like colloidal silver or mercury, which is also a great conductor. Why do you think mercury is the the communicator, the messenger and all that stuff, right? The same thing with the hormones. It's this fluid in a way. Mm-hmm. So this is why we understand these things in the breakdown, not for the sense of just being like, oh, I know how it works. It's to be able to actually put yourself in that space, put your attention yeah. and your awareness you're into that imagery. space. You're exactly. Yeah. And you can then learn how to touch it, manipulate it beyond the senses, beyond the five physical senses, uh, senses, you know, and that's, that's the thing that you're trying to have this adherence to, you know, it's not always about the external lights. It's the internal lights. There is a light driven as well within you. And yes, you can take it as physical light or whatever and stuff, but we know about the pineal gland. The pineal gland is the state that helps us. Uh, it's the the gland that helps us develop melatonin and serotonin for the sleep cycles and the dream state and all that. And there's an activation for it when it becomes in contact with light. But let's think about it. Is the pineal gland seeing outside physical light like you how how you see it? Or is it seeing a frequency of light that you can't even see with your own physical eyes? So if that's the case, how are you going to learn to program the processor part of your brain to break down and condense that light into the prism or the prison mm. of what's going to then reflect into this um, this concentrated light and to be able to take out the photons and the and the the message behind it? And how are you going to be able to get the message out? from it if you are only in the logical part of the brain if you're not using more of the brain to process it this is the trinity of being able to get the mind the mentation and the, and and the soul all into one harmonious cyclical nature just like everything in life is in a cyclical nature in a way yeah, fractal universe. I mean, humans come mm-hmm. out of humans, right? Like that's proof right there that it's a fractal universe. Like things come out of things and it just, it gets smaller and smaller and it just fractal, it's, it's fractals. And we could see that just in about everything, right? From the, from the galaxies to the hurricanes, to the sunflowers, to all that, to the spiral and all that. Like we could see the patterns in life, but you're going to need your right brain to do that, right? You're going to need the mm-hmm. right hemisphere. You're going to be able to, you got to be able to see things in patterns and you got to be able to recognize and, and intuit those things, right? And it's a lot of what people have cut off from our conditioning in life. And so that's another strength you'll develop when you start seeing things allegorically and spiritually and symbolically. And see, the thing is too, it's it becomes, I mean, the mystery is a mystery, right? But it becomes such a journey and so fun when you entertain the thoughts. I mean, I understand there's a lot of people that don't have the time, but when you start seeing the amazing parallels of 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples, 12 months of the year, 12 signs of the Zodiac, 12 mus- uh, twelve musical scales. Um, Bill, Bill said one the other night I never heard before. I was like, oh shit, that's, that's even right. Like 12 systems of the body, stuff like that. Mm. Like all these numbers, like obviously there's this intelligence because things repeat. But you're going to be able to, you got to have to unlock that part of the mind, right? You like, you have to use your intuition in combination, the marriage, right? The marriage of logic and imagination and having just that open-mindedness uh, kind of infused within all of that. And when you do that, it the, the journey now widens, it, it's, it's broadened, it, it becomes more of this, holy shit, there is more. And that's that door 
that when you open that, if you're that interested in life and you're not a cynical prick or all that, like you, the, the, it gets, it gets exciting. It gets very mm. enjoyable. And so to me, say you were talking about the Kundalini, it's like, Hey, like with the religious people, I, I, I said it before the seven seals in the book matches the seven chakras and the seven days of the week and the seven planets. And you also have diatonic scales, which is seven. Um, so like all of the parallels play in and there's things going on in your body. And I think in future episodes and videos, uh, we're going to explain, say, the, the sacred secretion of Kundalini and what that does for you and why it would have anything to do with dissension, why it would have anything to do with becoming enlightened. That when you're opening up the right brain, the garden to the east, you start to unlock this knowledge and this perception that you never knew was there because you were always cut off because society taught you to be. Yeah, uh, uh, big time. I mean, you know, it's what these symbols, what do they represent to you more than just first glance? You know, this is the point of learning, you know, what else, what else, what other reason is it to learn or see or acknowledge these um, it's mostly to patterns, make money. are these algorithms? Yeah, exactly. You see a lot of these true channels and conscious communities that just make the connection connections, but what does it mean? And not just what does it mean in the fact that it's like, oh, well, it means that this is a deep hearted hidden secret of the occult and this is who's obtaining the knowledge and stuff. It's like, okay, what does that do for me? How do I obtain the knowledge? How do I use the same thing that maybe the enemy or whatever? And I don't even think you should look at it as the enemy is using that as well. It's just more so it's like, how is this relevant and beneficial to me as well? How can this help me and help my brothers and sisters around me to be able to acknowledge this and be able to avert certain energies, not avoid, but avert certain energies or work with certain things that are going to produce this more fruitful outcome, you know, and then being able to remain strong and maintain being flexible for when your bottoms are in play. And so you can navigate back up. It's that's the whole understanding the sacred secretion and the Kundalini as well is because you're keeping the life force by keeping things like anxiety and anger and fear away. And also by not over expelling the life, life force wastefully and accumulating energetic debt. You almost have to look at it as like a bank account as well. And it's not by not a, a, abusing the body. You know, that's the basic one, not abusing the body and maintaining the temple and rebuilding and fortifying by, you know, obviously what you consume. You are what you consume. So of course that's gonna that's gonna play a big part in it too. And also not trying to discard reality and being able to wake awaken the inner dreamer, you know, intend on milestones as part of it all and being necessary in order to experience the ascent and learn how to make that rise up on command. You know, we think that it's so impossible or separate from us in that way. And it's like how do we do that? And the how comes from, yes, of course, observing the teachings, observing the knowledge. But if we're not putting into practice and stop expecting what's supposed to come and have a, a desire from the practice as well, in a way that it's like, well, I'm doing this because I desire to get in this state in order. You know, we do that one step ahead thing where it's like, well, I'm only doing this meditation and this Kundalini and this yoga to become flexible and better shape because I want to be able to be healthier in this way so I could attract and money or do this thing and then do that. That's a great example. Let me interject. That's mm -hmm. a great example yeah. though of that person using those reasons then could ask like one of these days by doing the stretching and the yoga and I'm only meditation meditating for that, that they could maybe have a great meditation to where they receive a download or a certain level of awareness that actually gets them beyond the point. So you don't know what these everyday things that people are choosing, as long as it is them getting better and starting to, to just 
kind of like, and I'll use the same word, interject some spiritual practices in their day. You don't know what that meditation is going to actually end up doing and leading you to, to like, like that as well. Right. Yeah. So I'm just saying organically, sometimes the universe could then guide people to the exact thing that they, mm -hmm. they didn't even know they were seeking kind of like how it did you mm -hmm. and I, right. Yeah. You don't, it's not like you have to constantly be over aware yeah, of right. That's what's what I, occurring. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times that you can see it fall into place. And that's where the humbleness comes in. That's the humility of it, of being able to be like, wow, I just recognize that this type of choice that I made has this occurrence and this outcome. Maybe you don't even see the outcome right away, but it's this type of occurrence. And I'm sharing that with the cosmic intelligence and i'm sharing that satisfaction satisfaction with the self first not needing or depending on sharing the satisfaction with somebody else necessarily all the time you're satisfying yourself and it's and it's longer lasting than being praised or pat on the back constantly you know what i'm saying like so right. if you another thing is like if you think that you can control things then what you want to control ends up controlling you because that's how much awareness and attention you are giving to the thing that you're trying to control mm -hmm. rather than trying to be re become responsible, having more so of the attention on your responsibility with the thing that you feel is in control or that you want to control. You know what I'm saying? Like not, trying to necessarily control it, but understand you have a responsibility when it comes to the matters and the facts of what it has to do in your life, you know? And through these processes, that's the thing. If through these processes, we have to understand that we're having like constant builds up, build ups of like, you know, like you're working out, you're building up your muscles, but you also have the tearing of spiritual ligaments as well. And then you're going to have times of running low, you know, having these, uh, uh, lactative muscle memories sometimes, and then stronger memories as well. You're developing the spiritual body, the etheric body with new scopes of practice rather than just trying to find always some sort of physical material thing in order to accomplish that. You're seeing the energetic uh, signatures through the rituals, seeing how they actually work and, and, and in their frequencies as well. Um, you're, you're also seeing when you go into those lower states, you're seeing the density that comes about, how you're going into more of the carbon dense state. When things start to slow down, feel more confined and more structured, that's more of a sign to break out of them as well. You know, and, and, and when you start to break out of them and you start to feel the boundless more energy that's your gauge and your meter of being like okay this is a more direct connect connection to divinity and more connection to source but not holding on to that in an egoic sense i guess you could say well said and i think too then if if there are certain people that aren't they are a little less interested in that state then that's when I say look at the mental process, look at the look at the physical processes of these things. And you don't know where that stuff's gonna lead you. If someone wants to start out looking at 9-11 and conspiracies, you don't know where they're gonna end up in five years. Maybe they need they need to take that journey organically then to wake up to realize these things or you develop the faculties, I guess is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. of using those developing the faculties of thinking itself going through the disappointments of, oh, the conspiracy and uh, just my religion and the government and like experiencing this organic disappointment and frustration to the point where it pushes that person into the 40 days and 40 nights into the desert, allegorically speaking of Jesus, which basically you're just confused, right? You're just, in, you're just in the desert. You're confused. I have no sustenance. I have no spiritual sustenance. Nothing's feeding me anymore. I remember when I was in my 40 days and 40 nights, it was right after Hurricane Sandy. And because of that pain and that lack of nourishment spiritually, it then pushed me to seek. But if there's people out there that don't see your gematria and they don't see the astrology and they don't, you don't know where they're at. So it's also making the point to say, if you are waking up or you are having these realizations, 
Do not worry about waking others up first. Do not worry mm-hmm. about trying to push things on other people. Don't worry about explaining shit to your to the priest down at your church. Don't worry about explaining things to mom and dad. Don't worry about it. it's if you've fallen into the frequency, if you've started waking up, if you're in the desert trying to get out of it, do not seek out, seek within. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's, yeah. it goes back to, I mean, I've heard Bill say it a hundred million times, Bill Donahue. So you know, it's a, the kingdom is within. Seek within the kingdom of heaven yeah. is it you know so that's where you're going to find it and, and look and people hear these words and they're key words and they go oh they cringe and they think of the guy with the beard and the guy in sandals and the cross it's a if you think of it in the spiritual allegory that it's just you in the desert that it's you on the cross that you're abraham that you're cain and abel and these are processes that go inside your mind you could use the symbolism then to start seeing the fact that the seven seals and the kundalini is just basically the is the uh, the kundalini mm-hmm. energy is the ascension uh, uh, crucifixion on on Gol- Mount Golgotha, which is in the skull between the two thieves and all that. Like y- y- once you just once you see it, don't start yelling at people. Keep going, keep learning, become a fucking master at it, and see it. Be, initiate yourself because that's what these secret societies do. That's exactly yeah. what they do. They prime their people and they don't give them the knowledge until the people deserve it. And we want to thank all these Freemasons and all the Jesuits and all that. By the way, it's Gio. Sorry, I'm ranting right now, but Richard no, Tarnas, Richard Tarnas, was a Jesuit. Oh, mm. see, that's interesting. And then what? What? So that's a perfect. He's a great example. person. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect example. Then, what is the perspective that you're supposed to have within that, and especially when knowing, when knowing the certain culminations and uh, lineations of things when it comes to maybe some of these secret societies and Jared in the back room at the wooden table and fucking little boy sitting, little George Soros sitting on his lap and everything, you know, what are you supposed to do? Chernobyl control center. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, do you right away discount that person and what they're teaching and their knowledge? Or can you also filter things through? Can you sit there and understand maybe the recordings of it? And let's just say for happenstance, if there's some sort of, you know, a g- evil agenda behind, you know, I'm not going to say this, but, 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 you know, Richard Tarnas, there's an evil agenda, a psyops or something like that. Yeah, to decode the astrology of the past 60 years and put it in (laughs) absolute packaged form so we could see that the universe has a design. Oh, yeah, 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 that's that's definitely a psyop. Exactly. So it's like no matter what, you learn a lot by even the lies that are said. Not saying that that those are lies or anything. I'm not saying that, but like you do also. Right, there's a a layer of deception. You can see a lot through things that are expressed, things that are said as well. You know, especially when you don't just take it for face value as well. This is what we say with the Bible and all that as well. You know what I'm, you know, I think we're both trying Mm -hmm. to say real quick. We're both Mm -hmm. trying to say is that once you begin and learn how to think and become conscious that you could see the bullshit through everything. You, if it was like a conspiracy theorist and a truth guy and all that, and there he's like, oh my God, the fucking Jesuits and all. And this guy's over here like, no, it's Satan. And it's when you just know how to think and you become, become self-aware, you just have the cojones, the spiritual cojones to say, I don't agree with both. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to think for myself here, you know, and they don't like that. Yeah. And that's the acknowledgement of yourself, of your higher self, of what is being called your higher self, of being more connected with this divine intuition as well. Mm. You know, it's that the, the left side making peace with the right side of the brain, the logic working with the, the, the dreaming and the holy intuitive creative you know, that's mind power beyond and separate from the mentation, but it's incorporated into the body as well. We learn through the physicality of the body. This is the same way where we learn through that in between point of that of the ego as well, rather than relying and depending on the ego only, which sometimes most of the time we don't realize that that's what we're relying on or what we're doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, and and Gio, by the way, we're approaching about an hour and a half. So yeah. I think we could we can call it in about yeah. 10, 10, 15, maybe less. But I think uh, you know it's all great points you just made, and I, I think truly, like, say something like a conversation like we're having right now is a matter of just kind of cracking the shell for people and having them realize that if there was this power against us, 
and that there is this evil in this world and all of that. And if it isn't self-generated, which I do believe it is, but it, let, let's just say that that evil doesn't just want, it doesn't want you, here's its main goal, to think for yourself. That's mm. all. To, it wants you to have biases. It wants you to be, it wants you under its egregores. It wants you under its sex right? It wants you under its politics. It wants you to, it wants you to be a hive mind. And I think that's where Matt McKinley always tries to say the screen. I just think that it's a learning mechanism. I think mm-hmm. it's, if you're a strong spirit and a strong soul and you become self-aware the the training space we're in, in this 3d realm in the body is a training for the spirit to become sovereign and, and liberated. And so that would be the only thing you'd have to be concerned about is, are you thinking for yourself or are you underneath the hypnosis of a paradigm and an egregore? And if so, how can you break free from it and start becoming your own liberated and sovereign being? It doesn't matter what religious thing you do. It doesn't matter what book you read. It doesn't matter what politic that you support. It doesn't matter anything. Your beliefs don't even matter at that point. Meaning like yeah. it's the, it's the not, it's, and Gio, we're, we're coining this this year. I'm, co- I'm coining this. And we could give a little bit to Gala too because he kind of repackaged it for me. It's not what you think. It's how you think. How you think. It's Exactly. It's, there's two different, uh, there, you know, most people are like, well, isn't it the same thing? Well, no, because the how led up to the what. Yeah. And that's the thing. Thoughts, no matter what, thoughts are going to happen. Even ones that aren't necessarily, you know, in, in the realm of what we're saying. It's not saying that you can't have certain thoughts as well. The point is to uh, initiate thought and observe the thoughts. It's how do we align them appropriately? You're working with this vehicle and, and becoming the builder, becoming an adept as well. You're getting into the space and becoming the person, becoming the being, becoming the consciousness who operates remotely and who operates in groups as well you're doing this through through the acknowledgement and the understanding of the symbolism and it's not about having a savior it's not about finding a leader it's about finding self which is the unity of all things Mm. noticing that it is everything and nothing all at the same time you know, so this is what we're saying when it comes to as we're getting into this um, more descriptive way of talking about what is ascension and being able to understand it on a further point rather than just some mystical yeah, like, just words, just just a zooming up because the, the English language is the least <laughs> the least mystical language. It leaves out so much and it's play on words of spelling it's play on spelling of original words that mean the opposite of what it's saying or means in contradiction of what it's saying even in the language itself i mean you just said spelling you're putting people under spells and then there's broad casting Mm -hmm. broad big or Broad, Mm -hmm. right? It's casting the spell. Or you have podcasting, which me in my eyes, I I just picture a little pea pod of like, you know, a bunch of us just sitting in a pod going, we all think the same, don't we, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's podcast in a way, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, Mm -hmm. I'm just joking around, but right. Um, And that's so the The English language is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not mystical. It, 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 It isn't. That's why if you're going to look beyond the English language, and I think it is a lot of times appropriate when you're going into more of these details in order to have that more resonated understanding that, yes, you're going to look, have to look at the origins of things. You're going to have to look at the history as well and see the fabrication of history as well. Mm-hmm. You might have to do that little bit of work because it's the programming that's you know, you have to understand that there is programming. And think of the word programming. You're pro the grammar. You're it's it's the initiation, the width of the grammar. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of it sh- is showing it right there. It's with the grammar. It's within the language. So if you can go back and recede and see the languages. Uh, in in that sort of way, and under all, also understand the interconnectedness of the etymology. You know, mm-hmm. through ancient Sumerian culture, 
um, and and seeing the migration of into uh, the uh, the more of the Mediterranean and the Phoenicians and the bloodlines as well. If you're going to look at the bloodlines and you're going to look at these things and and even look at potentials of DNA mixing or DNA fabrication or, uh, you know, uh, uh, extraterrestrial type beings, whatever you want to call it as well. We have to see that no matter what, what is the instilled language? What is the instilled grammar? What is it trying to say? The same thing with the word backwards. It's backwards. It's the back of the words. It's the things that are 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 either initiating something that's that's opposite. That's the English lang- language is to um, almost almost confuse and throw off track, you know, and sure. Once again, you can, it could be the creeps in the back room over time, how and they've done Jared this could thing. be working or, double time. Yeah. He's fucking shoving a hoagie and Italian sub right down his freaking yeah. throat. Well, number 13, extra thing. mail, both sides. <laughs> and if you don't, I want my money back. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Jared might so be working overtime. Is- yeah. <laughs> He's got, they got good I wish, uh, dude I, one of these days everyone will understand i mean i'm pretty sure yeah. especially with matt following us i feel like a lot of his listeners will end up coming here and vice oh, versa yeah. but if you don't know matt mckinley quantum conscience all this shit with the rubber ducky and uh, the jared in the back room and i mean that's where we got the the belief system uh or well the speculative system of seeing things like oh you know is it really the creeps the guys in the suits and the george soros and the people in the back room and they're making calls and they're arranging this shit and they're also setting up the gematry and all that or is this is there a deeper layer which by the way check out decode your reality with uh jason or logan jason who does this work where he says, no, 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 it's bigger. It's like the matrix itself is using us. We're the puppets and all of that, which I would still actually disagree with him there because he was calling the son the devil and he was saying that we're puppets to the reality and we're doing what it wants. When yet, why can't it be simple as it's a spiritual journey? You're here to learn in this school and this thing, all, everything that's happening is a mechanism and we all just don't understand it fully yet to the enlightenment and ascension of a spiritual being. And that's only a theory. I won't even say, oh, it is it. It's the reality. Hmm. They're using us. This is Barium. The, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say like I sound like Joe Pesci, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but, um, <laughs> dude, that was actually, I almost sounded like him. Was Check pretty, out Decode Your Reality. Spot on. That, was, that was close. <laughs> Not Joe Pesci. Yeah. Uh, Logan Jason. Jason Logan. Why is his and name? If you're pretty too- Joe Pesci, then, you know, yeah. two anyway. bad rules for you. Well, but we've, we've, we appreciate these guys and they've, they've helped us see beyond these other things. And guess what? They're not spiritual channels. They're not, they're yeah. like, con, like, uh, not conspiracy either, but they're truth channels. Right. And yeah. they helped us see beyond the veil of just thinking differently and seeing in that, like, because we were already studying astrology and spirituality and stuff and religions, we're like, wow, they're saying shit that this fucking Tibetan Buddhist book says, but he's just calling it this. Mm -hmm. And he's realizing that's amazing. He realizes that something's there that's in a religious text. that shit that he doesn't even fucking know about, which is awesome Mm -hmm. because you're saying, wow, people are really waking up. Like the Akasha is opening up. It just happens to be through English, which is basically retard language. That's Mm -hmm. basically it. I mean, it's for, it's not that great. It's not, I mean, for it, it it has its moments. And when I say Mm -hmm. retard, I mean, it has slowed down our learning, um, just in case anyone gets offended. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it has regressed, right? That'd be the word, or digre- regressed our regressed. our spiritual evolution in a way because th- you are hypnotized. You are only the language you know. Mm-hmm. Think about yeah. that. Yeah, everyone, like, let that one sink in. That's pr- more profound than you think. Think about Say it. Say one more time. You are only the language you know. Hmm. Exactly. The words so, and the sentences and those thoughts are the only things you are. So your language creates you and it creates your world. Yeah. So that's where it's like, if you can learn to see all patterns and images and symbolism in a way as from a standpoint of being a language, you know, these are all the culminations that we, once again, like I said, it's that condensing and the breaking down and the collapsing in through the prism of the mind into what we can see is helping us facilitate this ascension 
you know, you know, understand and go and looking through the teachings of what Christ consciousness and the physiology of, of ascension, you know, that only helps you more so become adept with it and be able to spring it more into an action of going into that internal physical space as well so that you can help facilitate it. And then on the external, you also can look at the cosmological events and see how those shiftings and those parallels of the ages are a cosmic download of bringing it all together and seeing the essence of what all co the collective may be in. And all through that, you're learning the languages. You're learning the, uh, the faces of sound and vibration and the frequencies coming attuned with your own frequency and knowing how to match your frequency with what type of uh, frame you want to be on. And this is where the true activation comes from. Yeah, you know, and this archetypal, is archetypal too. Mm -hmm. Forget that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is how we start to begin to regulate those things, you know. Yeah, we're going to use those, those symbols and archetypes and vibrations and sounds, and you're using it to, to become more aware. And what, if you know, if you're worried, like, look, you don't have to go learn, if you missed the point before, you don't have to go learn Portuguese and study etymology in 16 languages. The beauty of this ancient knowledge and the religious stuff is that there is this universal imagery that comes with symbolism and these stories. And that's what was so profound about these ancient stories, that if you understand the parables and the allegory, that those are like in mysticism and esoteric readings, the, when you hear the father, you're going to always think the higher mind, you know? So like, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a way to interpret it. Now, of course there's yes, different interpretations. I get that, but more so is when you see the parallel and all the, the uh, like from Krishna to Buddha, to Jesus, to Dionysus and all that. And you have all these guys who have the same story. When you see a story being repeated over and over and over again, that's, you know, and it doesn't make any sense to you too, by the way, that's God saying, Hey, whoa, whoa, like stay right there. There's something there for you to learn. If it doesn't hit your common sense the right way, that means it has a deeper truth to it. And when it's repeated over thousands of years in different cultures from all around the world, there's something there. And so, yeah. and then obviously it's repeating because there's a truth built within these. I mean, like, look, humanity hasn't been around for thousands of years telling stories about this guy who was born in the manger or whatever, next to this goat. And this girl was a virgin and now you're not just telling this story and over again, because they're having fun with it. It's a fucking mm -hmm. weird story. If it's not, if there's no, yeah. it's a very, like this it's a guy, bedtime story, if anything, then. Yeah. Well, and this guy sends his son down into this realm. He's like, I'm going to kill you. And it's going to save them. Yeah. Like, like you really think about this stuff but then at the same time that's what got me asking those questions it's no disrespect by the way to anybody who believes that it really happened i'm just saying that look if it really happened that's a miracle and i'm with it and cool hopefully jesus forgives me if he's gonna come back and say you fucking jerk off you didn't believe the story how dare you i didn't save you then but like more so of like just seeing all of the parallels of all the religions and seeing wow there's a significance it's universal it connects all of us why do, why do, why is it always God bless America? You know, what about the kids mm. in Africa? What about the, the seven kids that just got bombed by Joe Biden? What about all of those people? They're just like you and me and their cultures and religions just happen to be worded different with different languages and all of that. But they're telling they're, they're in their culture. There's truths that we all can use that, that it's like the pig piece of the pie mm. and God in the universe is so smart that it gave each culture a fucking truth. And the only way we're going to get to put the piece, the, the, the puzzle all together is when we unite. And that's yeah. the trick. That's the, literally, it's a sick joke that like we're bombing each other yet. We all somehow, some way have the answer. Yeah, exactly. And I want to leave it off with what you're saying to even just part of the reference that you just made nice. as an example, as an example of being able to see the Maya and understand the language behind the Maya mm. through maybe some of the things that we see as current events or whatever and stuff. And especially if you understand and see the more alchemical, holistic, hermetic side of astrology as well, too, in, in, in correlation with this, it's like when we take a look at nations or societies um, and, and how they lived. You're looking at their history and the conditions of the nations, especially in ancient times, seeing the attention, the, the wanting, the, the power grappling and all the series of events that fall with it. And you're looking also how these bodies 
have fell and how they have decayed. And you're seeing also what had brought about the unities and what has fell and what has lasted. That's your learning and doing the yoga. Yoga is the union once again. And through that, we're reflecting on the differentiating conditions that they are in or were in, or like I said, or currently in. So who at that time was seeking the knowledge and the purpose? The masters were seeking the knowledge at the time. They had the connection to the knowledge and what was kept as well. And we see that through a lot of the depictions of Ra and, and Ramsey and all that and the self-glorification, uh, the, the violence of conversion with the inquisitions, martyrs, those who were demonized as well. And that's where we look that without those things, even if we're looking at Adam, right? We look at Adam and Atom. if Adam was not with consciousness, if there was no consciousness at Adam, if the first physical body was in existence and was to die, there would be no more of anything. Anything, right. If there was no consciousness of the physical body. Therefore, that's how we know that life is eternal. You know? Man, the and, and to me. And right? that, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And this is the thing. It's the, it's the shielding from the reproductions by preparations by knowing the choices you make and the thoughts you choose to think having that oh that that type of awareness to do that to do that that's if anything if there's control that's the control you know what i'm saying let's even look at it as a sovereign being of the united states versus the united states of america there's the republic and then there's an incorporated corporation within the united states which a lot of people, especially you'll see a lot of conservatives will show you that. And that's a partial truth. And we all know that that's nothing that's really hidden. People go with that and run with it in a different direction. But that's the truth of the difference of it. The collective is agreeing on whichever principles one is programming. There's a system that has now been created and we're collectively agreeing on these systems. Yeah, what you so allow will continue. Are. Yeah. So which one are we agreeing on in that case scenario? Right. So no matter what, where's your energy coming from? Where's your money coming from? It's not just food and you need to feed more than just the physical body as well. You need to feed your spirit energy as well. And awareness. So, yes, it's your mental and conscious energy. Yeah, and I do when, uh, after your point, I have uh, something I would like to close out with. No problem. Yeah. So this is what we're just talking about throughout this whole conversation right now, too. And we'll go more in depth with it in later episodes as well. But learning how to work your energy, but finding its roots. I found that as a big conversation. I was a big conversation with my sister yesterday about uh, even our childhood and uh, our, our the parenting that we received in certain points. It's finding the roots, but also by looking at how your energy is being spent. Suffering is also known as working. So that actually in the ancient text translates to um, uh, to this, you know, working is also suffering, you know. And in our plane of existence, it's also known as the plane of suffering uh, or the plane of working. That's the burning of the blubber, the fat, the oil, therefore the energy. Now, connecting to natural energy, the etheric provided energy of the ether and beyond magnetic energy and transmuting it into the spirit and also the physical energy, it's you're starting to tend to the spiritual condition and the spiritual soul. And don't think of spiritual as I'm saying it as some woo-woo type thing. Think of it about the innate intelligence and the phenomenon that occurs. Conscious naturally. energy. Yes. Through nature. What makes a plant grow the way it does without being told to grow and the work the burning it needs to be going into the wealth where we are accumulating more than we are burning off the mind is working for the body um and it's going to have to pay off pay it off mm. and the soul is craving for true attention of the mind in order 
to work in perfect unison as well. So once again, it goes back to it's the Trinity being fully activated and working as a unit in order to create an infinite energy within us both physically and spiritually as well. The burning energy is running up a debt of Dharma, which in turn affects our karma. The union principles or yoga within uh, the yoga within ourselves is what charges us, uh, charges us up in replenishment. So the mind is actually blind. It's distracted and being able to clear the mind and it gets its attention off the building of the material world and its awareness and back taking in the light and the infinite innate intelligence information back into restoring the spirit. Once again, third eye the blind, spirit, the mind. Yes. Third eye. Well, that's a great, I, I never thought about that. That's the interpretation of the spirit and the mind and the body all in regulation. It's the extreme highs and lows. So think about the same thing. as like your bank account. You're used to your bank account being at $500. That's your standard, you know, or your room. You're used to it being organized in a certain way, but I'll just use the bank one. It's like $500. When you have say maybe $1,500 or something like that, how do you act? How do you think? How do you feel? You have this sense of comfort acknowledgement, being able to splurge more, having more confidence in a certain way. And not because it's like not that type of confidence, but it's like, you know that you can do more. And then when you're lower than the 500, that's your below your average and stuff, you're working, you're suffering because I got to get back up to that normal. Right. You know, so that's the standard of being able to have uh, that type of thing as upholding a standard and to be above normal and then lowering expectation of what's supposed to happen or not to happen. Yeah. Basically having no expectation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just going along with it, having, enjoying the journey. Like that's, that's really, that's important. It's important. Get the idea of floating up in the sky, shooting up like a rocket ship. What about the people in their cars? I think I said that before, right? They were yeah. going to smack up against the fucking, it would kind of be funny. <laughs> Um, then they show that and left behind where all of a sudden it's just cars were like, and they just disappear. Or, or that, right? Like, and then, what about the people that stayed? They got it. Oh, well, I guess, right. If you stay, you deserve it. But yeah, no, that's, that's dude, that's definitely something that we all have to just constantly be, uh, become just more aware of. And you don't have to be perfect. This isn't about perfection. You seek perfection, but in a way that's also a play on like perfection, I think just comes more with awareness. That's all. And then also being honest and, and being persistent in that honesty and awareness of I'm going to keep doing this work now that, you know, and a lot of people, maybe they get half in the bag when it comes to studying this stuff and then they get scared or lazy and they run, Mm. Yeah, you know, just give in like, you know what, I'm just going to go back to my normal shit because it's just too much to handle. And that's my point where there's no right or wrong here. I mean, I think we're at a juncture by the way of with this age of Aquarius and everything speeding up and coming into a spiritual singularity and all, I think this is a great opportunity for your soul to exceed and excel Mm -hmm. at a high rate. And that's what I think the the interpretation of this age shifting, like the importance of it. If you were to ask me, it's like, why should I care about the age changing? Well, whatever you do spiritually right now is basically going to, it's going to be heightened and it's going to speed up. So if you wanted to live a better life and whatever, like if you just take care of your bullshit now, according to, you know, at least what I've come up with so far, age of Aquarians coming in saying, Hey, look, you know, it's going to hurt for a little while, but if you, if you deal with the pain now, it's like kind of going to the gym. It's like, look, if you go and deal with your weaknesses and you deal with whatever, and you just keep going in the gym and and push it and through your and persistent and all of that, you get health. Right. So mm-hmm. there's this spiritual health thing that's going on. And right now we're in the spiritual gym. Yeah. Because the mind easily wants to go into what it knows. And as soon as you start challenging that, that's where the resistance mm-hmm. and the friction comes from. But that's the beauty of it is the learning, the internal knowing and the gnosis of gaining the wisdom, you know. And the only way you're going to do that is by continuation of it. And the practice of it, even when the mind wants to give up in that sort of way, that's where the dictation of the spiritual body needs to come in. You know, whether you're spiritual or not, that's where you have to have the uh, the the buildup of knowing that you are not just the physical self. Right, right. Hmm.
I have um, this little passage I want to read. Anything else you'd like nope. to kind of throw in here before I leave us off with a nice little little Tibetan Buddhism excerpt? Nope. Nothing? That's that's it. All right. Well, maybe we can reflect on this and and then we'll, we'll call it a day. But um, okay, so I have a book called The Bardo Guide book, uh, right? The Bardo Guidebook. And thanks to Matt McKinley again, to having a entertaining and enlightening video on this, I ended up going to find books about it. So, I mean, it's, it's right now, it's irrelevant of what the Bardos is. And eventually maybe we'll go into that, but here we go. Here's, here's a little passage I found to be very, very relevant to what we had talked about today. Having received empowerments and instructions from various masters, we may like to keep count and list our credentials. But just to think I have received such and such, just to have the superficial confidence of having obtained a transmission does not by itself bring uh, liberation. The only reason for receiving teachings is to liberate our being. The uh, The ripening empowerments and liberating oral instructions should free our state of mind in the sense that disturbing emotions should diminish and the qualities of wisdom should increase. Take that as your infallible guideline. Our disturbing emotions do not diminish by collecting notes of the different titles of teachings and the empowerments that we've received while neglecting to put these instructions and transmissions into practice. Liberation here means the abandonment of conceptual thinking, the collapse of diluted fixation. If we do not succeed in this, we are like tea poured into a cracked cup. After a short time, it leaks out. We must carefully invest Uh, carefully investigate for ourselves the defects and suffering associated with ego clinging and the grasping tendency of our mind. No one else can do it for us. No matter what practice we apply, some signs should occur. In the context of ground path and fruition on the path, signs should manifest as a result of practice. After progressing on the path, the result of fruition should be obtained. Not Not a bad passage to fall upon, you know what I mean? You know, I just grabbed this book and I'm like, man, let me just, I do this thing, by the way, where I'm just going to pick this page. And that's what I just fell on. Wow. And it's, and it's things like that, that we can help and reflect on and, and start to resonate with in that way and see the deeper meaning rather than just hitting us from some inspirational, which is okay. You, it's good to be inspired. Of course that drives the vehicle as well, but to, mm-hmm. How do we put it? This is what I'm saying by the English language is just so limited. But to have that type of chi flow through you, through just the resonance of something said like that. And I'm going to share for everyone here before we log off, just so if you want to screen share this or or screenshot it or whatever, but it's page 75 of the Bardo guidebook. And this is what I just read. And uh, it's, it is, it's incredible. And I love the fact that it's kind of like, Hey, like this is liberation. It's getting out of your own beliefs. It's getting out of your own ideas and allowing yourself to practice these things to see what works. It's to just, it's to do, it's to take action. Karma means doing, right? So anybody out there who wants to grab this book, I mean, eventually I think on uh, when we have a website or uh, when there's source links and all that, I want to put out a lot of the books and and at least the PDFs of my favorite excerpts into one packaged file for a lot of people that maybe things I found uh, mostly important. Geo, if you want to also do that with me or do your own, we will both do that and share a lot of uh, the files that we have because I have, we have tons of stuff. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it, I mean, it's like, you know, this is what you get when you get two mercurial guys who are just interested in everything. And I haven't stopped collecting books now for three, four years. And I I mean, probably longer and I wouldn't turn back. So yeah. And in in those books, that's what you find. As long as you seek, you shall find. Right. Exactly. It's, there's so much shit to share too. (laughs) Oh, I know. I think that confuses a lot of, uh, a lot of the times Gio and I have, it's like, there's so much Mm -hmm. that it's like, man, where do we even like yeah. I want to talk about this, but then I want to talk about astrology. And then I want to talk about spirituality, but then I want to talk about politics. I want to talk about how stupid people are. I want to talk about how beautiful people are. I want, Oh God damn. I don't know what to, you know, and it's not easy to do. And that's why as we go, we make claims, Hey guys, we're going to have videos. We're gonna, we are, but it's mm-hmm. just, no, it's with two, just two guys that are about a few, like a thousand miles away from each other. And then we're still learning as we're going. There's so much to grasp. Yeah. There's so much to do. And eventually we'll get around to all of it. And I'm sure in the next few years, 
there's going to be big things that happen to Geo and I when it comes to this this truth stuff and all that. So uh, and sure. our platforms and and we're looking forward to it. But just know and, and please be patient. Yeah. But I promise you, if you ride along, if you take the ride with us, you're not going to regret it. Yeah, exactly. We're going to cover those areas and and also go into them deeper to become more adept with some of the more detailed teachings and stuff. So, mm. um, yeah, it's going to be a big thing. And once again, you know, make sure to hit that like button, uh, subscribe, subscribe email, that shit, everything you can to get a yeah. hold of us in touch with us. If you want to talk with us, we're hit here up for the you. comments. Yeah. Hit up the comments. Let's hear your thoughts. Let's hear what, what you, what you got to say. And maybe there's something that we could touch up on that maybe, gets us intrigued that's our that's our motto that's our mission is to intrigue the mind and intrigue and activate something that's going to come from a natural point so you guys can do that as well for us so hit it up you know what to do so that with that we uh we leave it off and we love you we care about you so please do it with us we we only want to do more for the world and for all of you so um yeah till next time hang tight